In this video, we are looking at a full pros and cons review of the J2 Bixby electric motor for your kayak. Now, we're also giving one away, but if you don't know much about these electric motors for your kayaks, well, this is the video that you're gonna to wanna to watch. Now, I've really wanted to try a Bixby for a while now because my life on the water is either in one of these or in one of these. With the bass boat, I can get to areas faster and take more gear, but with insurance, fuel, trailering, storage, it all costs a lot of money to run. On the other hand, for me, there's always something special about a kayak. I can get into skinny water, fish places that I can't really get into on a boat, and connect with nature in a really chilled out, peaceful way. Oh, wow. <laughs> how cool is that? The challenge for me in a kayak, though, has always been about traveling long distances and how those long distances affect my fatigue at the end of the day. Now, this is where the Bixby J2 test on the water here today comes into it. We're gonna look at everything that you need to know that closes the gap between the motoring world and the kayaking world. So, let's get into it. Now, if you can't tell, I'm really excited about testing the J2. I first came across the Bixby last year when I was in New Zealand and I was watching a friend of mine use one to cover some serious miles offshore to find some big offshore snapper. Frustratingly, he was getting to all the good spots first and I just could not keep up while we were going in and out of these islands. Sitting off his kayak and watching that though, I did have some serious questions like, how long did the battery last? How fast did the boat actually go? Did I still need a paddle? And whereabouts on the kayak do you need to install this? Can I have it on the rudder or in the Mirage? drive well, what options for mounting are available. So now that I've got my hands on not one, but two, we are going to look at all of that. Now, like I mentioned at the start as well, we are also giving one of these away brand spanking new. There'll be more about that later in the video, but I should probably mention as well, I haven't spoken to Bixby and Bixby don't know anything about this review. There's no kind of affiliation there. Now out of the box, I did find the unit super easy to install. Obviously every kayak is different, and while some people have gone with options for Mirage Drive mounts, I didn't want to use the motor in the cockpit because I would lose the ability to use the Mirage Drive at the same time. In terms of the actual kit, I think Bixby have been smart here. In the box you have everything you need from the motor perspective. Waterproof battery, motor, charger, safety lanyard, the remote control. But because there are thousands of different kayaks on the market, they have left that mounting option up to you. And there are a number of different options for you to choose from. Personally, I chose the mount that went into the power pole sockets of both the kayaks I currently own. The first one is the Hobie Outback and the other one is a PA14360. And for me, it was one of my priorities to have the motor all the way back here. Obviously, it's out of the way of the rudder that is further forward and I really didn't want anything in my Mirage Drive well not only because I wanted to use the Mirage Drive but I didn't want cords and things in the cockpit area or my working area where I was doing a lot of the fishing and the less I can have in there the more area that I've got to play with during the day. I did notice as well that you can get a mount for an SUP or a SUP and I'm going to throw this Bixby on a SUP in a few weeks time probably around about a month and go for a SUP fishing session so stay tuned for that. Overall though the installation was really quite simple it couldn't have been easier it was these four bolts into the mount and the couple of screws and nuts and whatnot to put the motor onto the frame itself radio enough about that let's get onto the water Now getting onto the water was actually easier than I expected. I just put a bit of bungee cord through the waterproof battery handle at the back here to keep it secure. I velcroed the remote control switch somewhere convenient next to my leg and attached the kill switch to my life jacket. And I think this is really important to talk about because you can find yourself in a bit of trouble. If you don't have that thing attached to yourself and you fall into the water, you will find yourself watching that kayak as it motors away off into the distance. However, if you attach it to yourself and you find yourself falling into the water, you'll take the cord with you and the unit will turn off. So you can swim over, pick up your kayak, jump back in and go again. So out of the box, in terms of speed, it gives us 32 pounds of thrust. Now, realistically for a small motor, I really rated that because I was getting around about, I don't know, about 90% of what I'd usually get using the Mirage Drive only, but for free. So once I took that into consideration and then I added the Mirage Drive pedals on top of it, I actually went really quite fast. Now, I did have a bit of fun admittedly doing that when I first got on the water, but realistically, that's not how I cruised around with the unit. The majority of time, I probably set it to around about 70% speed and then was on like a cruise control with the pedals and had both of them working together. That put me around about four and a half mile an hour or around seven Ks an hour if you're an Aussie. The other thing that was actually really 
really quite surprising about using the unit was the sense of security that I got that I didn't realize that I would get. So right now, if I have a, some sort of lower back pain or I have an existing injury, or maybe I pull a hamstring or a calf or I have some issues on the water, I can just put this thing on autopilot, maybe put it on about 70% and point for home and go straight home. And there's a bit of a security and insurance that comes with having this motor on board that I really didn't expect to have. It's quite nice having this safety net over my boating experience where I can just point and say, take me home. And now I've got to admit, I did get a little bit lazy when I was using this unit because I just find myself on autopilot cruise control from this spot to the next spot. And then in that time period, I could tie some knots, have some lunch and just relax. When I was using the motor though, it was a piece of cake to do something else whilst I was transiting. So at the back at the moment, there is a battery level indicator that I probably don't have the best access to, but you can see it if I do get out of my seat to have a squeeze. So in terms of battery life, it does say that you get 80 minutes at full pelt, but realistically, like I said before, I didn't really use this like that. What I found myself doing was 70% power just on cruise control. And the box does say that you get 12 plus hours out of doing that. My personal experience over the last month with some long sessions that I've had, you know, 10 plus odd hours, I found myself getting back to the boat ramp with it reading around about that 30% battery level. So I still had plenty to go. I should probably mention as well, the battery itself is definitely waterproof. It is sealed around the edges and I did accidentally leave it in the back of the kayak while it was getting smashed on this bank with waves for a good half an hour and it is still going strong. In terms of connectivity with the remote, I haven't had any problems and it is a simple go fast, go slow or immediate stop kind of uh, concept there. It would have been nice if there was some sort of indicator on it to tell you, you know, whether you were at say half power or uh, to read the output, but realistically, I don't think you need it. It's probably one more thing that can go wrong. So keeping it simple seems to work okay here. Now we'll also mention that I did find it handy to launch the boat with the motor in the unlocked position. All you need to do to then stow it and seat it in the right spot is just to crank the speed up really quickly when you're clear of the shallows and the motor will force itself into the correct mount. The design actually works well because when you consider hitting some rocks or something submerged, the motor will just break away to the rear and it will avoid damage. Once you are clear of the obstruction, you can just jack up the speed, the motor will reseat itself again and you can be on your way. I'll show you some footage here, but I did note that if you do hit reverse too fast, it will pop the motor out of the clip and unseat itself. But realistically, I did find reverse quite redundant in the kayak. I found myself never really using it. You might find it convenient if you're running a kayak that doesn't have a reverse on it or is not a Mirage drive like the one that I've got. It's not all gravy though. There are some contractive points that you do need to think about when you are using this because you will scare all the fish off a flat if you are not careful. Before we get into that though, the channel is absolutely pumped to be giving away this J2 Bixby, a $2,100 unit, brand spanking new, courtesy of Scott Lovick Hobie. Not only do the guys at SLH lend me the unit to do this video on and test it and so I could share my thoughts with you guys, but they are the guys that are also donating a brand new unit to one of you guys. If you're not familiar with the guys at SLH, they are an Australian kayak store based out of Melbourne and they do have an online facility that does ship internationally. Obviously you can buy the Bixby, the J2 and all the mounting and accessories that do come for these units from their website and everything that you might need for your kayak, I'll throw the links below in the description so you can check them out. Now to enter the giveaway, you need to do two things. Firstly, on this channel, like the video, subscribe to the channel and comment below on what kayak you would be putting your J2 Bixby on. Secondly, you need to head across to Facebook and find this post on the Scott Loving page. Obviously like the page, share that post and tag three friends. Now don't do that now, I'll throw a link in the description so you can find it at the end of the video and I'll also remind you at the end of the video so you don't forget. I will draw the winner in one fortnight from today and when I do, I'll go back through and make sure the entry is valid and you can take away $2,100 worth of Bixby product. Now you guys know that I like full disclosure and honesty, so I will say I did charge SLH a small fee for the production of this video because camera gear is expensive and if you might remember from last fortnight, I actually lost a camera overboard. I didn't fully cover my losses, but the guys did help me a little bit contribute to this new camera gear so that I could get back filming and creating. So big shout out to Scott for that. Now, let's get back to the constructive part. Now, firstly, one of the things that actually caught me by surprise about the Bixby was the amount of noise that the motor put off. At 
max speed, it was quite audible. And when you think about it, I don't think you're ever gonna solve that problem. It's a small propeller, so it needs to turn quickly to generate thrust. But the bigger consideration is that it's attached to a hollow instrument, otherwise known as a kayak. It reverberates exactly the same as say a guitar or some sort of drum. But naturally this means that you're always going to hear the motor when it's going. I did speak to a few of my friends about it that have got a little bit more time on the units than I, and they did say, as you approach a fishing spot around about 100 meters out, you do want to turn the motor off and pedal the rest of the way in to stay silent. And I think this is really important to understand because this motor is not necessarily the motor that you might use on a flat so let's say you do a drift down one path and then at the end of that drift you're not going to use that motor to go back up and reset the drift on that flat that you're about to fish over again that noise that you generate on the way back up will actually be quite loud so if you want to stay stealthy i'd recommend that you continue to use your paddle or your pedals for me this motor worked best when i was just traveling long distances as opposed to little bits and on and off to you know reposition around a flat the second thing that i'd consider is weed now i've gone with a weed guard on the back of my bixby but it will still ingest weed if you go through clumps of it obviously you can remove it using your hands but i found it best to just stop the motor prior to going through those clumps and pedal through the weed once you're clear of it through the other side, then smash that power and go again. But I think you're just asking for trouble if you are motoring through weed. You're obviously going to end up with some tangles. The last point I'd consider is this clip that is hanging off the back of the kayak. And obviously that's going to be kayak specific or mount specific, but just consider that clip when you're loading and unloading the kayak. You really don't want to snap the clip off. So use that loading system or some sort of block that, that protects the area so you're not pivoting the entire weight of the kayak on that clip. Don't be too concerned though if you do end up breaking something. There are spare parts like weed guards and accessories that you can buy online. So if you do break something, it is not the end of the world. Yep. First cast. Oh, so good. Nice, laddie. All right, so let's wrap this thing up. Now, initially when I got my hands on this, I had a look at the price tag and I thought for that 2100 Australian dollars, it might have actually been overpriced. I had to think about it a little bit more and then I considered some of the other accessories that we get for our Hobies, like the power pole that costs another 30% on top of what this unit costs. So I did change my mind on that opinion, particularly when I consider the insurance or the capability that this motor provides me at the end of a long day. If I pulled a hamstring or I found myself in trouble, I could just turn the kayak around, head for home and punch autopilot and just be on my way. And I think that's really gonna to appeal to some people. And with respect to that, one of the big ticket items about this unit in particular was that at the end of my long sessions that I've had on this kayak, I haven't felt knackered like I usually feel. I haven't needed those Red Bulls to get me home and I think that is awesome. I am planning on getting to know this motor just a little bit more though and taking the uh, motor out on the sup and seeing how it goes for a SUP fishing session. Now here's that reminder at the end of the video for that giveaway. Remember, share that post, tag three friends and get in it to win it. I hope you enjoyed the video. Stay safe. I'll see you next time.